All right, so I've been uh, doing the uh, transition metals and how they react in the body and you know how they're created in the body and dealt with and transported and and how they work with the carboxylation and so forth and which is your transition metals in your body are the most important thing you have without those you are dead now and the thing with with them is that they have to be in the appropriate quantities and they have to have the appropriate metals and you have to have the appropriate enzymes and then they will deal with the the things in your body correctly and this place here they deal with, but they, they treat water absolutely fabulous what, what I'm reading here and I appreciate this very much from them this is a place called uh, ultra clear biology solutions for treating water now listen to this they, they did all the research they did better research than anybody Bacteria versus enzymes versus chemicals. This is the process happening inside your body. They're talking about in treating water that's in a, in a uh, whatever system they're, they're dealing with. I don't know. But they're talking about treating that water in an aqueous solution. And I am talking about treating the metals and, and delivering them and picking them up in an aqueous solution in your body. So listen to this. I'm going to read it to you. It says... Bacteria are living cells which have the capabilities of consuming waste of different types, reproducing and actually producing enzymes. Now, enzymes are not living things. Those are like little chemistry kits that these things are doing. And that's exactly what it is. Now, so this is better said, bacteria are the factories produce enzymes. When the right bacteria are present, and they have to be, in the right quantities, and they have to be, and in the right conditions, and they have to be, they produce enzymes much more economically than people can manufacture them in a factory. Now listen to this, what are the enzymes? Well, enzymes are not alive. They're complex chemicals produced by the bacteria. The bacteria make a little... Uh, little chemicals to do their little alchemists, these uh, bacteria. All right. So they make the chemicals. Uh, they're produced by the bacteria. They cannot reproduce. They cannot actually, I mean, or actually consume waste. They are the things that speed up these chemical reactions without getting used themselves so they can be reused again. However, enzymes are all proteins and some enzy enzymes attack other proteins. Therefore, enzymes' usefulness is limited by digestion from other enzymes. So, it, 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 it's a self-sustaining system. It says, okay, we got a bunch of this stuff, uh, a little bit toxic looking. All right, we go over there and consume that up for us and get it out of there. So, and they take care of this. So, now, now you're going to go, what, what about the chemicals? Well, chemicals are not alive either, really. I mean, that's what they're saying. Chemicals include soaps, harsh acids, bases, solvents, enzymes. Chemicals do not reproduce themselves. Chemicals can be used to mimic the properties of bacteria or enzymes, but they are either environmentally harmful, not as efficient, or both. Use Mother Nature is what they are saying. And I listen to these people because they are smart. I can tell you that right now. They, do, they put this all together in the most simple, easy to understand way. Now, how do bacteria, enzymes, and chemicals work? The bacteria consume the waste materials. When the bacteria consume waste, they convert the waste into safe byproducts, carbon dioxide and water. When the waste materials are very complex, such as pond sludge, now this is, they're taking care of some nasty, nasty stuff. Ultra clear bacteria actually produce enzymes by themselves and saying, okay, what do we got out here? I'll make some of this, make some of that, and go out and eat the stuff up. They make their own enzymes, and you know, the enzymes go out and say, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help you guys eat this stuff, because... Enzy anyway, enzymes break down a complex waste into simple compounds ultra clear bacteria consume. Enzymes are not capable of consuming a waste such as sludge or ammonia. Rather, all they do is uh, they convert complex waste into simple waste. Bacteria are still needed to consume the waste material. Enzymes alone will not do the job. An enzyme product only has half the tools necessary to get the job done. So, it's a it's a system. It's a system. You can't. You got to get all these things right. And it's a simple thing to work with. Is you, if you put the right stuff in, it's going to work right. Now, chemicals can oxidize sludge and ammonia, uh, ammonize, and all these business. And only very harsh and dangerous chemicals can accomplish this job. Less hazardous chemicals are generally not effective in a pond environment. So, if, what were they just trying to tell you? That don't use harsh chemicals to do this stuff. Use Mother Nature. So, they're giving you ultra-clear natural solution, a biological solution. 
that these people know what they're talking about. So I would go buy some of this if you want to treat the environment right. And anyway, this is my point, is you are a chemical factory and these are the processes going on in you. And bacteria is, is like primal, so important to you. And, and people take uh, antibiotics and all kinds of things and then they want to be healthy. They're taking and eating all kinds of things that aren't supposed to be in your body. Those things aren't just going in there and saying, okay, I'm not, I don't have any, anything to do. Of course they're in there. They're attaching to some of these metals. They're destroying some of these things. They're fighting some of the bacteria. They're, they're attaching to things that, that, that should be consumed. And, and, and I'm telling you right now, feed yourself right. Use the correct diet. Then exercise will chase after you because you will feel so good. And one of the main things that I just discovered in, in this transition metal complex, you know, uh, circuitous route of trying to figure all this out is that you need to tweak up your, your ability to transfer these molecules inside your body. So I started looking through all the different things. And make a long story short, ends up I look castor oil. So you castor oil, they've been using it for thousands of years. It does this, it does that, it fixes this, it fixes everything. So I said, well, how does this stuff work? So I'm looking at it, what the chemicals are, and I go this and that, and so forth. And it's, it's, a, it's an oil, and I mean, it is a slimy oil. And it's, it, um, it, it goes in, and it it's got, has got what's called esters. And the esters do the carboxylation. They increase the... Um, the chemicals that are used in carboxylation so that that works better. It's, it, it, it helps you in the transfer of these, these metals. And, and, and it just fell into place. We're a natural, perfectly working system, but we've been putting all kinds of bad things in, doing bad things to our body, injecting things we shouldn't be injecting. We're taking all kinds of things, you know, uh, you know, all kinds of things that doctors give you. Marijuana, that won't ever hurt you. You know, I mean, it's not good for you to, to, to just continuously do that, but it can't, can't, it's not going to hurt you like what they give you from the doctors. And they keep it away from me. It, 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 uh, it aids in apop apoptosis, which is the destruction of, uh, of um, cancer cells. And, and it, it, uh, Harvard found out that in three weeks it cuts tumor cells uh, she's, I think, a third or in half, something like that. But I mean, it's 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 very very disheartening that they don't listen to what what is really your body's telling you. And I and I have a whole process for doing this. Very simple. All you got to do is find out what's in the blood, because that'll tell you what your metals are and what the chemistry of your blood is. Then you also get a fecal blood a fecal sample. And you match up the uh, bacteria to the um, to the blood work, and eventually, very soon, there will be a pattern develop in symptoms that are related to deficiencies or or high concentrations of something in your blood. And and then the bacteria will also mimic that same thing, and it might be you're missing calcium, and you'll find out that you're missing uh, spignosis or something. I don't know, but this your body your body's half half bacteria. So why don't we look at this? I mean, seriously, I, I, I've been asking people to look at this for a long time. And, and it, this is, is instrumental in chronic diseases because you don't get sick instantly, but you just never get well. And this is exactly what the cause, well, I'm saying exactly what the cause, but believe me, all of these things are, every single system in your body is affected. If you, and that's, that's what it is. And the malaise and the tired and this and that. This, the whole society is infected, and I'm telling you right, right now, and it's because of not paying attention to the basics. That's all I have to say. Okay, this all came about as a, actually as a result of uh, mud fossil um, research that I do. I discovered mud fossils in 2012 and been researching ever since. And you can see this is an opalized heart, and you see the variegation separations of the tissues exactly perfectly articulated separations, which means that these colors are different tissues. It means those tissues have different molecular uh, chemistry, which means that if, if, if the chemicals aren't correct, it's not going to function correct, which means that if we could get in here and look at this with an x-ray fluoroscope and illuminate it with an endoscope somehow in here, or whatever they call it, yeah, an endoscope, they get in here and they could 
could see what the tissues are in your body while you're alive, that might help. But anyway, um, what we need is a database to fix this. So here's the database. This is what I posted today. It says we need this. We need a database. No personal information at all. This database needs to have these attributes. It needs to know the blood chemistry, which is the metals, the minerals, and all that business. All of that stuff, the blood chemistry. is So, so this is a database we're going to have nationally, then, or anywhere, the whole world. Then the fecal bacteria of that person. All right, and then you know the um, age, sex, and symptoms. That's all. No, no personal information whatsoever. You might want to have something like occupation. You know, I mean, there could be a whole bunch of fields you want to fill in. Have some variable fields. I did. Anyway, forget that. Um, go to my website. I mean, my uh, Facebook page here. I got a website too. This one here is uh, Science Theory Challenge. I don't know if you can see that. All right, I guess you can. All right, Science Theory Challenge is the, the one here. And then I also have Mud Fossils, um, which is um, the original Mud Fossil uh, group here. All right, so there's this one here as well, which is Mud Fossils Original Research Group. And this one here um, is um, for the research that I'm doing on... Uh, these ancient creatures that are their DNA proven the whole thing so come up here learn about that and then the last thing I have is this one which is my mudfossils.com site now this one you can go to mudfossils.com and then it, here's the DNA reports and all the business I've got everything on here about all of this and this is all quite quite serious and extremely valid and verified so go up here and you know see what you want to see and do think what you want to think I'm not trying to push anybody anywhere they're saying it's a certified situation two labs I had to do this and ancient protocols all kinds of stuff so that's the deal